Hi, I'm Penny Keynes, Biosecurity Extension Officer from Livestock SA. Today we're here in the Adelaide Hills to talk about foot rot. It's detection, treatment and management on farm with Chris Van Dissel, Animal Health Advisor from the Department of Primary Industries and Regions. So in South Australia, the foot rot program is funded by the Sheep Industry Fund and it's managed for the fund by Bursa. And we have officers all over the state who can be called on to go out and conduct foot rot diagnosis on farm. Now foot rot is a contagious bacterial disease of sheep. It comes into flocks basically through sheep introductions. We run um, mainly merino sheep here and the uh, Cuddly Craig fire in the end of 2019 came through here and we lost about 60% of our breeding ewes. So uh, come March we had to start thinking about restocking so we ended up purchasing 400 sheep my father uh, did all the research and looked at all the paperwork and stat decks and made sure that the sheep were declared free of foot rot. Quite a wet spring compared to the last few years. We started to notice quite a bit of lameness then and Persa came in and uh, diagnosed them with virulent foot rot. It wasn't the greatest news, um, but I guess we were very lucky that we kept them isolated from the rest of our Sheep. So we had the contractor come in and foot pair them all and treat them with an antibiotic and then we put them all through a foot bath for 10 minutes um, and then today we've just got them in to see how their recovery is going and we'll run them all through the foot bath again. So as we've seen in the case here today, a flock that normally wouldn't have sheep coming onto the property other than rams due to bushfires have had to introduce sheep to build up numbers. Uh, and unfortunately, as a result of that, they've, they've brought foot rot in onto the property. They did everything right though, so uh, we've been able to isolate it to this one mob of sheep. They checked the paperwork before buying the sheep in and, and there was no declaration of foot rot. And the trouble with foot rot is it's a seasonal disease, so it's prevalent and it expresses readily uh, when it's warm and wet. So in South Australia, that's normally through the spring. These sheep were purchased at the end of a dry summer last year in March. When a lot of the lesions dry up, sheep stop limping, and so it's not noticeable to the farmer. So by isolating them right through until spring 2020, uh, Jock here on the property has managed to isolate the infection to one mob. Uh, and that's the big success story here because there's 2,000 other sheep on this property that haven't been exposed to the disease. Whilst it can be in sheep anywhere in South Australia, um, it will readily express in the wetter areas. So we're talking from the southeast up through the Flurio, Adelaide Hills, Kangaroo Island, up to the Barossa, the Clare Valley. We get a bit occasionally on the lower air peninsula. So those really where you're talking above 500 mil average rainfall is where it expresses and we detect it. But that doesn't mean it's not in the drier areas of the state. In South Australia, because we have such a variation in rainfall across the state, that relying on clinical detection of foot rot alone hasn't been conducive to controlling the disease because in drier areas it's harder to detect. So we've gone to lab-based diagnosis in South Australia and that's where our officers will not only inspect sheep on a property, but they'll take samples to test in the lab of anything that looks suspicious. And then if we can culture to Chelobacterinidosis, the foot rot bacteria, we can run a virulence test on it and see how significant that infection is and help guide the, the farmer on how to get rid of it. Foot rot in South Australia remains a notifiable disease under the Livestock Act. And what that means is that any suspicion of foot rot, be it by the sheep producer, a vet, a livestock contractor, a stock agent, anybody who thinks that they've noticed foot rot in a flock or knows that a flock has foot rot must report it to the department. So that's to an animal health advisor. Uh, because the key is early diagnosis, formula an eradication plan and, and get rid of it as soon as you can. Uh, without that reporting and without getting that accurate advice, you can think you're controlling the disease but all you're doing is hiding it under the surface and it will come back in the next spread period and, and cause you issues again. So foot rot is, is significantly affected by host and the environment as well as the, the strain of denodosis that's causing an infection. And those three factors have to align perfectly to get full expression of, of full-blown foot rot. 
what we find where we're lacking in terms of rainfall or where we have sheep that aren't as susceptible, often you'll get a flock with lower grade lesions. That may well be a virulent agent, as in a virulent foot rot bacteria, but because we don't have sufficient rainfall or we've got sheep that aren't that susceptible, we can have underexpression of, of disease and therefore make a misdiagnosis. So foot rot relies on warm weather and enough moisture for it to pass from sheep to sheep. What producers need to look out for really late winter, early spring, as it starts to warm up, we get those ambient temperatures up above 10 degrees, start to look for any lameness in the flock. The, the quicker you pick up lameness in your flock and inspect your sheep uh, to rule out foot rot, the better. The longer you take to do that, the more sheep it will spread to and the bigger the problem will be when you come to deal with it. Basic observations of, of lameness in early spring, and that could be just as you're bringing, moving sheep from paddock to paddock or bringing them in for crutching or shearing, just have a look at them. If you get ones that are hanging off the back of the mob, head bobbing, limping a little bit, they're the ones that you want a target to look at. The problem with that is though, is if you only look at those sheep, there can be other causes of lameness and still have foot rot in the flock that you miss. So we say, look, look at your mobs, both in the yards and in the paddock, estimate the prevalence of lameness. If it seems like it's more than those few that you, you, know, that you always get, then have somebody come in and, and make an accurate diagnosis. And to do that, it's putting them through a handler or tipping a good number of them over the board, making sure you're not missing something. So our inspectors, if they do a, a diagnosis inspection, will look at 100 sheep in three of the highest risk mobs. So if there's more than 300 sheep on a property, we'll look at 300 across the mobs. If there's less, we'll look at everything. And that's how you diagnose foot rot. It's a mob disease. It's not an individual sheep disease. So you need to be looking at, at a lot of animals across a flock to make an accurate diagnosis of foot rot. Early in spring, as temperatures come up above that 10 degrees ambient, that's when the foot rot bacteria starts to get active in the interdigital space of, of the hoof of the sheep. So it invades that skin in between the toes basically and what it starts to look like is a bit like tinea or athlete's foot. You get some hair loss, some reddening, it looks a little bit moist and you can get a little bit of, of smell there. What it then does is tries to eat underneath the hoof. Foot rot's an anaerobic bacteria, it doesn't like to be out in the air, so it likes to get under the hoof and start to eat in between the hoof and the soft tissue underneath. So what you'll see in a sheep's hoof is there's an interdigital cleft or an interdigital join where the hard horn of the, of the hoof and the soft horn of the heel sort of meet. There's often a little, a little mark or a crack down there where the bacteria will start to invade. And as it eats into there, it will start to eat under the soft horn of the heel and try to underrun its way to the outside wall of the hoof. And equally, it will start to eat between the hard horn of the hoof and the soft tissue. And that's what we call underrun. When you're getting denodosis that causes underrun, you've always got suspicion that you've got a virulent bacteria going. Uh, the issue with that is that early grade lesions of benign and virulent foot rot look identical. So you need to get an accurate diagnosis and lab tests to work out what you're dealing with. With the bacteria eating underneath the hoof, obviously lameness gets quite severe. It's quite uncomfortable for the sheep. In really severe cases, you can have the whole hard horn of the hoof falling off, but usually you're not gonna see that until well into spring as the bacteria has had long enough to underrun that hoof. So part of diagnosis is actually pairing that hoof back to see how far a lesion has progressed. Obviously by looking in between the toes you can see that there's redness, hair loss and sweatiness. And as, as a farmer that's probably all you need to look for. If you've got that, there's suspicion of foot rot, get an expert in to diagnose it. If you're wanting to diagnose more severe lesions, so lesions that we're talking up into the score three, fours and fives, then you actually need to do a little bit of pairing to see how far that bacteria is eaten across the sole of the hoof. So we usually pair back, we start at the heel and we pair around the outside, just like cutting your kid's fingernails, cut that hard horn off and see if there's any wetness, any smelliness underneath, underneath there. Uh, later in summer, you'll often get fly blown maggots and things in there, but really we're, we're just looking to see whether that hoof is folded over or whether there's an infection in there how far across the heel and whether it's got to the outside wall of the hard horn. 
Plenty of sheep in wet country will get overgrown hooves that will fold over the sole of the hoof, grow long in the toes, but it's whether there's an associated infection with that is important for our foot rot diagnosis. So this is a low grade lesion. Um, all you've got is a bit of hair loss, sweatiness in the interdigital area, but you've also, once we paired it back, you can see how you've got active infection <coughs> ran into that soft horn, hard horn junction. And if you don't pair that out, often the foot bath won't penetrate that lesion, so you won't kill that bacteria uh, and you get favourable conditions and that, that infection will get going again. That's why pairing free treatment is so important when you're trying to treat foot rot. You are best to get an experienced contractor to come in and do that part of the eradication program for you. Not only are they going to be a hell of a lot quicker than you, but it's probably going to be a lot better for the sheep as well. Uh, we have approved contractors that uh, we work with through PERSA. We'll involve them in your program, in writing your program, uh, and we have them in most regions of the state, uh, particularly where foot rot is prevalent. When our animal health officers or your vet comes out to take a sample to culture the, the specific foot rot bacteria on your property, what we're looking to do is to swab the leading edge of a lesion. So that's the most recent part of the hoof that the lesion's got to. So that could be as simple as swabbing the interdigital area. So if there's wetness and sweatiness in between the toes, we can swab there. We'll often get a good culture there. Where you get an underrun lesion, which is eaten underneath the hoof, you actually want to pair that away and swab to the furthest point that that infection has got to. The reason you want to do that is because other bacteria will come in behind denodosis and cause infection or just sit there in that hoof. And if we're trying to culture denodosis, we don't want all sorts of other bacteria growing. So swabbing a lesion at the leading edge is very important. Uh, we avoid swabbing where we've made the hoof bleed through pairing because that can interfere with our culture. We also avoid swabbing where we get fly strike in, in the hoof because again, that interferes with the culture. So once you've got a diagnosis of foot rot, it's important to work out how far through your flock it's gone. The situation here is that it's isolated to one mob and that's fantastic. It's much easier to treat one mob than it is the whole farm. And that's through early detection, early reporting and isolation of introduced sheep. So they're key points to remember. Our animal health officers will work with you and your private vet to develop what we call a property disease management plan. That will be tailored to your property and we will sit down and we'll walk, walk step by step through with you what you need to do to get rid of the disease on your farm. It's important to have a written plan because there are many things that can go wrong with foot rot management programs. Mobs get mixed up, miss musters, unforeseen rain events, that sort of thing. So having a written plan that everybody knows what's happening and everybody sticks to is the best way to ensure that you're gonna have success with eradicating foot rot. Treating foot rot can be as simple as culling all the sheep that are infected, waiting seven days for the bacteria to die out in the pasture and restocking with clean sheep. But obviously if people are trying to build numbers, that's not always a viable option. More frequently, people will elect to do some form of control of the foot rot through the spring while it's still spreading. So usually that's through a bit of foot bathing, usually uh, off shears or after crutching, just to control the spread of disease, limit the impact it's having on the sheep. An eradication program generally won't start until pastures dry out enough for the bacteria to stop spreading so that you give yourself the biggest chance of success in eradicating the disease. So in South Australia, you're really not talking until sort of December or after Christmas to start that because it just hasn't dried out enough. It's November now and you can see we've, we've got green grass and clover on the ground so foot rot's still spreading. Control programs are generally tailored to the property and that's through consultation with your private vet, with your animal health officer, a contractor if you're using them, to tailor a program that suits the, the property, your enterprise, as well as the sheep and the number of sheep infected on the property. In general terms, what we're looking at is pairing all the sheep up, pairing them back so that we expose any infection that's there, foot bathing them, splitting them into infected and uninfected sheep, and holding them in on the shed, putting them on clean pastures, and then doing that process again in two weeks' time to see how many have cured. It's important that you look at where you run sheep into the yards, pre and post treatment. You, often you do have to run over the same tracks or the same ground to get back in, but the more you can minimise that, the greater your control of the disease will be and the risk of reinfection will be reduced. You can do up to four or five inspections through summer until you're not detecting any disease anymore. 
uh, and ultimately you're going to get to a point where you have sheep that aren't curing, uh, they've got malformed feet, for some reason they keep carrying the bacteria, ultimately you're going to have to cull some. But we'll tailor a, a property program to suit your, your enterprise and, and the numbers that you need to retain. Doc's buy security plan has probably saved him a significant amount of heartache and headache in dealing with a foot rot infection on the whole property. He's isolated it. Programs like One Buy Security can offer you a buy security plan template that you can fill out for your property. Uh, you can also utilise the services of accredited contractors to inspect sheep for you when they're coming onto your property. Or even better, you can source sheep from properties that have had an independent assessment for foot rot by an approved contractor and they know that they're free of foot rot they inspect their flock regularly and they haven't found any lesions. If you'd like to know more about foot rot, we have uh, just released the foot rot ute guide for South Australia, which is an 80 page document. It covers everything you want to know about foot rot from diagnosis, sampling, testing, pairing, foot bathing, how to set up a program. It's a very useful resource and can be found online or in hard copy. Uh, we are fortunate in South Australia to have a sheep industry funded foot rot management program. Uh, without which we wouldn't be able to have such an effective program to control this disease in South Australia. Foot rot remains a very significant uh, economical disease of the sheep industry. It also represents a significant animal welfare issue. Uh, it's a problem that we need to manage as a state and keep a lid on. We have an effective program and we want to keep it that way. So please monitor your flocks for foot rot uh, and at the first sign of any unforeseen lameness Make sure you report it immediately and uh, let's speak this problem together. The Foot Rot Program is funded by the South Australian Sheep Industry Fund. If you'd like more information, please go to the PERSA website.